Aloha and Namaskara. Welcome back to the Yogi's Roadmap, unfolding our potential through the yogic experience with Yoga Download. My name is Bhavani Maki. Today we will explore how the science of yoga works and the process of turning it into our personal art. Of the 196 sutra, only three describe asana, or the actual physical practice. In Sutra 112 of the first chapter, we are told that yoga has two wings. You might be familiar with that word nirodaha, which we explored in the first Yoga Sutra talk. Nirodaha is the calming of our stormy and tumultuous nature. It is a process of tanu, of literally identifying where our triggers are, our involuntary drivers, and then systematically learning to thin the talons or tentacles that enmesh us into involuntary states of mind and attitude. The two approaches need to both be engaged in order to be effective. Abhyasa means practice. This is the outward expression of yoga. Because we are laying down new neural pathways, consistency is everything in yoga. It's so much better to do a little bit consistently than to do too much all at once and let it go for days. We're trying to reroute our entire psyche to open up new paths. This requires constant care and tending. The internal experience of yoga is vairagya. It's our ability to let go. It takes a lot of effort to finally let go of effort. This, in tandem, the abhyasa and the vairagya, is so much a process of unlearning old habits that no longer support us and developing healthy new ones. In the next sutra, 113, Patanjali further elucidates practice. Tatra stithau yatno abhyasaha Abhyasa literally means to check the downward pull, the pull of the heaviness of our self-negating attitudes, which comprise 80% of our daily thoughts, to really lift ourselves up and to cultivate new awareness. It requires a steadiness of effort and the effort to be steady to recognize these patterns and no longer identify with them. They're not who we are. In fact, they are part of the mystery and veil of unfolding our true selves. In the next sutra, Patanjali describes how we can approach this process. 2.14 Satu dirga kala nairantarya satkara sevito tritha bumihi. Satu, definitely, positively, it will take dirga kala a long time. On the average, it takes about 10 years to learn the fundamentals of any science or art. Get ready to learn the basics. We have to have an understanding of the general mechanics, and this means the postures as well. Take time to study and investigate how focused you are. Nairantarya, is your mind all over the place? Are you easily distracted by the self-negating tendencies or by those texts and emails 
and notifications that you receive on the average about every seven minutes. Can you create enough time in your life, sacrifice time for sleep or leisure or just hanging out so that you can practice without interruption? Satkara, why are you doing this work? Are you doing it to achieve eminence, acknowledgement? Are you practicing in such a way in which you're just reinforcing these old habitual patterns that defy common sense and are the antithesis to learning? Sevito, be committed to this. Really put your heart and your life into it. You're not here to learn yoga. You're here to learn about yourself. There's nothing casual about this work, but it really depends on how you want to experience yoga. If you want beautiful yoga abs and yoga buns, yoga will give it to you. If you want to expand your inner freedom to enjoy the fullness of self and life, the yoga sutras They offer us insights and ideas that we may not have even have conceived of. In Sutra 246, Patanjali describes the qualities to be cultivated within postures. Shtira Sukhamasanam, asana, or yogic posture, comes from as to stay and to breathe. Nam, meditate on the eternal cosmic vibration. The asana practice is only one of the eight limbs of practice. It is like the jewel setting in which we experience the internal opening to new worlds and universes within us. It is there to help us develop stability and stillness. Does your yoga practice only add to your agitation or even sloth? How can you use yoga practice to develop clarity and sattva, luminosity of awareness? Can you be comfortable and steady in any posture? There's always another posture to help you expand your capacity for peace. In the next sutra, one of my personal favorites, 247, Patanjali describes the perfection of yogic asana. Prayatna shaitilyananta samapatibhyam. Prayatna, it does require effort. If it doesn't require effort, and it doesn't bring you in touch with discomfort, If you only do what's easy, it ain't yoga. It's known as boga, just feeding your sense enjoyments and doing what's comfortable. You can't grow unless you live on the cutting edge. And it's been said that if you don't live on the cutting edge of consciousness, you're taking up way too much space. Some effort is required. It's natural that when you make an effort, some anxiety arises. Maintain the integrity of your alignment and relax your anxiety. Anxiety arises when we have an expectation, when we're doing it for an outcome or the fruits. Shaitilya is the relaxation. To recognize it is an endless process. Fuse yourself with the energy that supports you, gravity, breath, the sphere of the atmosphere, and let yourself be held by the posture rather than pose and hold the posture. In the last of the three yogic sutras on asana 248, Patanjali proceeds, Tato dvatvan apikataha. And if you recall, dvesha, dvi means to divide and esha, ourself from lives. If we're practicing yoga in a healthy and integrated way, 
it will support us and sustain us to be able to meet the challenges of life, to recognize our perspective, the perspective of others, to create a synthesized awareness, our expanded capacity to enjoy and make sense out of what seems like the chaos of life, to realize that this world is an energetic field of polarities, positives, negatives, challenges, gifts. All of this is what keeps our life growing. To challenge ourselves keeps our lives vigorous and exciting. The yogic postures are a practical way to explore the content within our being. It's said that every pose has a honeymoon phase. And Mr. Iyengar was known to say that when you want to get out of the pose is when it begins. This is when the dormant impressions start to bubble up to the surface and go from prasupta into udara, which is a full-blown reaction this is considered much healthier than suppression. Now, when it comes up into our field, what do we usually do when we have pain? We tend to offload it onto others, or perhaps to just stuff the poison, which is prasupta, which can lead to dis-ease. As we develop awareness of these patterns, and as Patanjali says, the pain, the distortion is not being created in the moment with the practice. It's simply being revealed. We can see this stuff come up, recognize that what is happening is it is flushing from our awareness and our tissues, assuming we make healthy choices. We are in that tension of holding steady and release, vichina. As we develop skillfulness in this, we start to go into the tanu place. And tanu literally means a thinning of these cords. This is in many names of the postures. Prasarita Padvottanasana, Uttanasana, Purvottanasana, Parvottanasana to go beyond prior self-imposed limitation over some time. And as the Sufis say, it takes an average of 20 years of consistent practice in conjunction with metaphysical practice and therapeutic analysis to finally ground this in our relationships and in our life, we'll notice the vritti as it rises up from within us. And rather than project it or stuff it or obsess over it, we are able to release that self-negating and deconstructive idea or attitude, maybe over three months, maybe over three weeks, eventually in three breaths, and one day we can catch the vritti before it arises and let it go with our intention. These sutras are invaluable and really rarely offered in the Western context. It's very difficult to navigate the yogic path without a map. I know I felt very lost without them. I encourage those of you who feel like there's something more to discover, something that it's really very challenging to offer in a general yoga class, to dive in deeper. Feel free to visit my website, bhavanimaki.com. There I offer many sutra aids, including recorded yoga sutra discourses that also are accredited for continuing education credits through the Yoga Alliance. My book, The Yogi's Roadmap, A Journey to Self-Realization, 
with the Patanjali Yoga Sutras, I also offer workshops, intensives, trainings, many on my home island of Kauai. I hope our paths cross again. Until then, happy journey. Aloha and namaskara.